Hey guys and welcome back to another video. So I've already done one eye just to get a bit of an idea on how to tackle this look. It's a very kind of uh, interesting kind of look so I was wanting to just try it out first with the initial idea. Anywho, moving on. So to begin off this eye look today I'm going to go in and prime my eyelid with my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. I love this to neutralize the eyelid as well as create a nice tacky base for the eyeshadows to stick to and for the eyeshadows to stand out a lot more than if they were to just stand out against my normal skin. For the first shadow of the day, I'm going to take this beautiful, like, pastel-y, creamy pink shadow from the Juvia's Place Deuce Palette, and I'm placing that all through the crease on a fluffy crease brush. As you guys can see, I'm not bringing it to my outer corner. I'm bringing it all the way to the inner corner through that nose ridge area, and then I'm taking it to about the tail of my brow. I'm not bringing it any lower, so I'm keeping it across that brow bone. For the darker pink, I'm taking the Chi Chi Pride palette. I'm going in with this magenta pink shadow on a petite crease brush, making sure to pack that pigment on the inner corner of my eye. So again, where that nose ridge area is, and then take it out towards the tail of my brow. I'm just kind of flicking it up a little bit there. I do want the color to be focused along the brow bone, just slightly under that kind of creamy light pink color that we used before. And then I go back in with that soft pink to blend out any harsh lines or edges so it's nice and soft and smoky. For like the next shade, we're going to take a deep kind of, what do you call this, like a berry red shadow on a pencil brush. I'm taking that just slightly under that magenta pink shadow through the crease and towards the tail of my brow, just deepening up that socket area. And then I'm going back in with the magenta pink on that same petite crease brush and then back in with some of that soft pink on that fluffy crease brush. Just so there's no harsh lines or edges, it's all nice and smooth and blended. Next, taking my NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk, I'm carving out the eye shape per se. So there's a little purple section um, through the crease that I'm kind of carving out right now and I decided to use my NYX Jumbo Pencil rather than concealer because I wanted a white base to allow the shadow to stick out a lot more clearly and more pigmented. And then I'm going in and carving out the crease for the lower section of this look. So there is a lot of like steps and a little bit of process to this but it isn't actually as hard as it seems. Once you've done that, we're going to take this beautiful like mauve color from Makeup Geek called Wisteria and on a petite crease brush, I'm just packing on this color along that kind of middle section that we carved out before, taking it all the way to the tail of my brow and just building up the opaqueness of the color. So there's nothing too crazy with this step. You're literally just filling in that little section we created. Then I'm going to take my NYX Jumbo Pencil and Milk on that concealer brush again and I'm going to just kind of redefine that cut crease section underneath the purple. So I go along and just define that up underneath the purple color and then also fill in the lid space as well so the whole thing is white. It's got a nice neutral base for the next shadows that we're going in with. So next I'm going to take a deep purple shadow. This again is from the Chi Chi Pride palette and I'm packing that on the inner corner of my eye. Then I'm going to take that magenta pink shadow from the Chi Chi palette again and I'm going to kind of blend the two colors together. So I'm blending in that purple and that pink so that they melt together and they just fade rather than having two stark colors just sitting there on the lid. I also take that magenta pink shadow quite far along the lid, about halfway I would say, just towards the center. And I soften out the edges a little bit. Then I take some of Tarte from the Juvia's Place palette and I pack that on initially with my finger on the center of the lid to make it nice and opaque and then I go in with a bit more detail on that precise shader brush and just kind of bring that color up towards the crease area, blending it into that magenta pink shadow. And I will go back and forth between the magenta pink and the Tarte shadow to get my perfect blend. So there's just a fade of color. There's no, like I said, defining line where the color begins. I also start packing on that color on the other side of the Tarte shadow because we are creating a sort of halo eye here. And instead of covering the whole lid, I'm actually taking it up on an angle towards the tail of my brow because as you see on the other eye, I have like a section of like winged, I guess liner, you would call it. Re really, it's just shadow and it's kind of creating that, I don't know how I would def 
describe that like a not pixelated effect but kaleidoscope that was what the word I was trying to think of it gives you that kind of kaleidoscope effect you know with the different prismatic kind of patterns and that kind of look to it I don't know what do you guys think <laughs> anyway taking that berry red shadow on a petite crease brush again I'm blending that into the magenta pink shadow again taking it up on that angle towards the tail of the brow then I'm going to mix some of the deep purple shadow and some of the berry red shadow and I'm just kind of taking that again on that upward angle towards the tail of the brow. I do go back and forth uh, between all the shadows at some point just to make sure everything is seamlessly blended. And to finish off this section of the eye I'm going back in with that magenta pink shadow um, and just kind of flicking it out uh, to soften to soften it a little bit more because I do want it to finish in the pink rather than finish in the purple, if that makes sense. And I use a pencil brush to kind of just fade it out. So here you can see I'm pointing out that winged liner or that eyeshadow liner kind of shape. So I go back in with my NYX Jumbo Pencil and Milk on that eye concealer brush and I carve out the winged liner shape that I want. Taking it all the way up to the tail of the brow and I fill it in as well and just kind of fade it out into the skin. So there's no harsh edge to this wing liner. It's going to be a faded look. So I don't want there to be a harsh white cream base line there, if you know what I mean. For the initial shadow, I'm going to take that deep purple color and I'm going to pack that on the very inner point of that liner. Then I'm going to take that berry red shadow and I'm packing that next to the purple. Kind of mixing the two together because I don't want the purple to be too stark. I want it to have a bit of a reddish tone. Then I'm going to take the magenta pink and I'm packing that next to the berry red. All the while I'm going back and forth between all the colours so that they all melt together seamlessly and there's no harsh lines. It's just faded like a little gradient effect. Next I'm going to take Tarte again on that precise shader brush and I'm packing that next to the magenta pink shadow, keeping it focused in the wing liner area. We're creating that sort of halo eye shape effect again but on that winged liner look and in a different section. I don't want it to be mirrored or in line with the lid section. I want it to be in a different area to create that kind of kaleidoscope effect. So I'm going back in with that magenta pink and just filling in the outer edge of the wing liner and I do go in a bit more with that deep berry red and then some of that uh, purple shadow to flick up towards the tail of the brow and a little past it as well I want to extend out. Then I go back in with a pencil brush and some of that magenta pink shadow and I soften any harsh lines or edges along that winged shape. And you should have a little something like this. Hopefully. <laughs> so for my brow bone highlight, I'm taking WA from my Focalore Perth Travel Palette and I'm packing that on the highest point of the brow. Then I'm going to quickly curl my lashes and apply some mascara. This is the Raw Volumizing Mascara with coconut oil. And I'm packing that along my lashes to make them nice and black so that my natural lashes mesh, mesh in with the falsies. And for false lashes today, I'm going to take my Icona Make Him Miss Me lashes from their Midnight Collection. I feel like they're really complemented to this eye look because they are shorter on the inner corner, longer on the outer corner. For my waterline, I'm going to take Dusk, which is a coal eyeshadow from Fat in the Moon. And I'm going to place that along my waterline for a bit of like a pinky tone. I went in with puffs from my Juvia's Place palette and applied that to my inner corner for a bit of an inner corner highlight. For my bottom lash line, I'm going to take initially this dark purple shadow that we've used on the lid and pack that on the outer corner of my eye to really deepen up that lash line area. And to blend it out, I'm going to take that berry red shadow on a pencil brush and smoke out towards the inner corner of my eye. So I am smoking out the outer corner, making sure that is the darkest point, but I am dragging it in towards the inner corner as well. Then to finish it off, I'm just going to soften any harsh lines or edges along the bottom lash line with some of that magenta pink shadow on a petite crease brush. And then to finish off the eyes, I'm going to go in with some mascara on my bottom lashes. Okay, this part is the cool bit. I found these little like nail art fruit decorative pieces from 
Etsy. So I thought they'd be fun to add to this grape inspired look. So I applied three little grapes uh, or bunches of grapes along the kind of cheekbone area of my eye, just on one side. I thought they were really fun and they could really kind of emphasize the grape theme to this eye look. What do you guys think? Do you get grape vibes from this or not so much? I really do love the effect this look gives. Please let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed this tutorial or not so much, please let me know. I love hearing your feedback and I hope to see you in my next video, guys. Let me know if you have any requests too. I always love hearing what you'd like to see next. Otherwise, have an amazing week. I love you all so much and I'll see you very, very soon. Mwah. Bye, guys.